What's up, everybody? Nitro Dwyer back with you for another episode of the 10th inning. We got the MLB playoffs starting tonight with the NL wildcard match between the Brewers and the Nationals. Then tomorrow, we got the AL wildcard matchup between the Athletics and the Rays. In this video, I'm going to give you my predictions for who I think will make it on to the next round, face the one seeds, LA Dodgers in the West and Houston Astros in the East. Now, before we get this video started, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the 10th inning if you want to keep getting sports news from the four major sports in North America. Anyway, let's get started. First, let's start off with the NL wildcard, Brewers and Nationals. The Brewers were one of the hottest teams going into the last month. Actually, going into the playoffs, they are one of the hottest teams in the whole MLB right now. They finished the regular season with a 20 and 7 record in September. Best of any playoff team. Now, most of this was without star outfielder Christian Yelich, possible MVP winner Christian Yelich. Yelich went down due to a knee injury suffered on September 10th. Because of this, he's out for the rest of the season. He is not returning for the postseason, but the Brewers still managed to come back. At this point, the Brewers sat at 76 and 68. Third place in the NL Central and third place in the NL Wild Card. However, that didn't stop them. They came back. They were the best team over the last month, surpassed the Cubs, surpassed every team in their way to get into the playoffs. They got the number two spot. The Nationals finished the season hot as well, not nearly as hot as the Brewers, but they were 17 and 11 in their final month. Of the year. This was with a Max Scherzer who didn't really pitch up to Max Scherzer levels. Scherzer was still coming off an injury. He had a strained back at the end of July, held him out until the end of August. August 22nd, he returned. In the five starts in September, he had a 5.6 ERA, which is not Max Scherzer numbers whatsoever. But they were led because of potential MVP candidate Anthony Rendon. Anthony Rendon cooled down a little bit in September, but in the month of August, he was possibly the best player in the game. In August, he had a 394 average with eight home runs and 29 RBIs. He led that offensive surge that the Nationals needed and had in August. August, they were probably the hottest team out of anyone in there. That's why they're in the playoffs right now. If they didn't have a hot August without Matt Scherzer, they might not be there because they had to rely on Patrick Corbin and Steven Strasburg as their number one pitchers. That didn't really work out to plan. They didn't quite get the production that they needed from Strasburg and Corbin. However, Rendon, Turner, Dozier, Soto, they all led the Nationals offensively to come to play strong to earn that wild card spot. So, get that's how those teams got there. Now let's get into the predictions. Matt Scherzer for the Nationals will be starting the game. Good news for Nationals fans. However, he really hasn't been the same guy. He has a 5.16 ERA with 43 strikeouts to 6 walks. Those numbers are really good. Those numbers are the numbers of a great pitcher. 43 to 6. That's about 7-1 to one strike strikeout to walk ratio. Great numbers. But the ERA, Scherzer is getting hit. When he's not striking people out, he's not really getting outs otherwise. He hasn't gone an out in longer than six innings since he's come back from the injury on August 22nd. That's not very good for Scherzer. But the Nationals have Steven Strasburg, Patrick Corbin, they have Sean Doolittle coming out of the bullpen. They have a good pitching staff if Strasburg doesn't pitch how they want him to. Now, since this is a do-or-die game, if Scherzer doesn't pitch the way they want him to, you can best believe that Strasburg and or Corbin will be available for the game. They need everything they can get since the wild card is a one-game winner-go-home. Now, for the Brewers... Brandon Woodruff's going to take the hill. Woodruff is having the best season of his young career so far. He has a 3.62 ERA with 143 strikeouts and 30 walks. 
best of the Brewers pitching staff. In lim- in a limited playoff career, Woodruff is one and one with a two point one nine ERA and an insane point eight one walks to hits per inning. That's ridiculous. Now Woodruff has been the best pitcher on the team all season long, so it's understandable that they want him to pitch in this do or die playoff game. Now the Brewers without Christian Yelich don't have nearly as much of a power lineup as the Nationals bring. The Nationals have Trey Turner, Juan Soto, Anthony Rondon, Brian Dozier. They have great players all around. The Brewers without Christian Yelich, they're still a dangerous lineup. I mean, the lineup led them to be 13 and 5 without Christian Yelich. So They're obviously doing something right, and they're hot. They're hot at the right time. Maybe with having an off day the past couple games, past couple days, it may have cooled them down. I don't know. But right now, they're hot. That's what leads team to playoff wins. The best teams don't always win. That's just a fact. The hot teams win, and we know the hot teams win. Will we see that trend continue? I don't think we will. I don't think we'll see that trend continue. The Nationals have so much power in their offense. They have a very balanced lineup as well. Their defense is really good. I don't think the Brewers can match them in any way. Brandon Woodruff, he'll throw a good game. Matt Scherzer, I expect him to be back as Mad Max. He's going to have a really good game. Put that last month out of his head, out of fans' heads. Scherzer will be back. Put them in the win column. Nationals win 5-2. to two. They'll be going to LA for the first two games in the NLs in the NLDS Nationals over the Brewers. Now, Wednesday's game we have the Rays versus the Athletics. This will be a matchup between two different styles of baseball. The Rays did it through pitching and the Athletics did it through power and defense. Defensively, you really look at the corners for the Athletics in Matt Chapman and Matt Olson. Chapman is possibly the best defender in the league today, in the whole MLB today. You have you have Nolan Arenado. You have Alex Bregman. Who can compete with that? But Chapman is up there as the elite fielders in the league already. He hasn't had a great average year, but the power is there. If he turns into a more well-balanced hitter, he could easily become one of the best players in the league soon. But... The Rays don't really have that guy. Austin Meadows was the leader of the offense for the Rays. He had 33 home runs with 89 RBIs. But pitching is where the Rays stand out. They posted a team 3.65 ERA this season, led the American League while allowing the fewest home runs of any team with 181 home runs. Their bullpen's a big reason for this. Not saying their starters are bad, but their bullpen... They they did a little strategy. Whenever Charlie Morton, when Blake Snell went down, when Tyler Glasnow went down, they usually used an opener, which you'll pitch maybe two, three innings of a game. Then your bullpen's coming in for the rest of the game. They played the matchups. They looked at analytics. They know the analytics. They played very smart on the pitching side, which is part of the reason why they're here right now. They're 96 and 66. Great record for a wild card team. If the Yankees weren't so overpowered this season, even with the injuries, they may have finished first place, but they didn't. They got a wild card spot, clinching their first postseason berth since 2013. And it's because of pitching. But on the mound for the game, we have Charlie Morton this game, who was 16 and 6 this season, 3.05 ERA. A 1.08 walks to hits per inning with 240 strikeouts and 57 walks. The Rays couldn't have picked a better player for this game. Yeah, we get it. Blake Snell, Cy Young winner from last season, is healthy. But Charlie Morton, he's proved it this whole season. I like the decision by the Rays to choose Charlie Morton because if they make it next round, they'll have Blake Snell for game one, but they have to make it past this round. The Athletics lineup is one you can only hope for if you're looking for a power offense. They're not the best average team, but they have a ton of power spread out throughout the lineup. Matt Olson, Matt Chapman, and Marcus Simeon all have 30-plus home runs and 90-plus RBIs this season. Marcus Simeon 
I mean, he just blew up this season. He would be a he is a potential MVP candidate. He's not going to get it. But if Mike Trout and Alex Bregman weren't in the American League this season, it's very plausible that Marcus Simeon would have won the MVP this season. Still, he's not. But the Athletics also have Chris Davis and Mark Canna. Chris Davis, their DH. No, not not the lefty Chris Davis, who was a power threat and now. No, Chris Davis with that K. Remember that name. He he hit a lower average this season, but he's still a huge power threat with the bat. Then you have Mark Canna, who can play off the bench, start outfielder, provides a lot of pop for him. The Athletics have all the all the power in the bat that they need for this game. Now, the Athletics are playing at home this game, which is huge for them This in this one game go home, die, do or die situation. They're 52 and 29 this season, good for fourth in the MLB. And the Athletics have done this through power and their bullpen. The Athletics, like the Rays, have a very good bullpen, but it wasn't the bullpen that we saw from last season. Blake Trinan and Lou Trevino both got shut down in September. And they they really needed someone else to come up and emerge from the darkness. Well, that guy was Liam Hendricks. Liam Hendricks made his first all-star team at 31 years old. He has a minuscule 1.8 ERA and 124 strikeouts in 85 innings. They also restocked their starting staff by acquiring Homer Bailey and Brett Anderson. Homer Bailey, they acquired him through a trade. And Brett Anderson, they signed. However, they'll be without their top pitcher, Frankie Montas, the Dominican-born right-hander who was suspended for performance-enhancing drugs. Due to this, they, they've yet to name a starter. I'm assuming it's going to be Sean Manaya, but I'm not going to. I'm not a hundred percent on that. It would make sense if it's Sean Manaya. Sean Manaya has been their best pitcher for the last couple of seasons. Lefty, not a hard thrower. He's not going to overpower you with any of his stuff but he has great control very good movement so I'm assuming he'll be the starter and that'll that'll shut down a little bit of the Rays power bats of Willie Adames and G-Man Troy G-Man Troy 18 home runs this season 16 of which have come off right-handed pitchers so I would think that they're going to go with Sean Manaya for this game but it's still up for debate now, Charlie Morton will be taking the mound for the race. As I've said, great decision. They need Charlie Morton. They need their best performer this season. And I, I I, just love the move all around. Offensively, the Rays aren't as much of a juggernaut as the Athletics are. They don't have nearly enough firepower. But they're still a good team. They have Tommy Pham. They have Kevin Kiermaier, G-Man Troy, Willie Adames, Austin Meadows. They have a they have a balance of power and speed in that lineup, which I think will do very good. I if the Athletics start Sean Manaya, that'll give them the best chance to win this game. But even with that, I don't see the Athletics winning this game, even though they are at home. I just think the Rays pitching is better than the the Athletics offense. The Athletics offense, no doubt, has a lot of firepower. But, one, can they do it when it matters? They had the easiest schedule over the last month in the MLB to make the wild card. That's not an excuse for why they're going to lose. It's just fact. Looking at the teams they played, looking at their combined win percentage, they had the easiest schedule out of any team. Therefore, I don't know if they're back right now to face a juggernaut pitcher in Charlie Morton. The Athletics have a great lineup, but I don't think they'll be able to match up with the Rays pitching staff. They have to get to Morton early. The only way I'll see them win. If they get to Morton early, that means they'll have to go to their bullpen early. Now, the Rays wouldn't be foreign to this. They've brought their bullpen in early before, again, using the opener. But if they don't get to Morton early, Morton just gets stronger as the game goes on. So because of this, I like the Rays in this game, although it will be a close matchup because, again, the Rays aren't a juggernaut on offense. So they won't score many runs, but their pitchers will hold the athletics to not scoring many runs. I like the Rays in this matchup. I'm going with the Rays to go to Houston 
meet up with the Astros in the second round. Rays four, Athletics three. Now, again, these are just predictions. I'll give you my predictions for the rest of the playoffs once these games are matched and set because I could give you my predictions for the rest of the playoffs and be right with everything. But if I don't have the wild card right, then is it really worth it? No. It's more fun that way, I think, but I want to make sure I have all the details I need because if it's Rays versus Astros, it might be different than Athletics versus Astros. If it's Nationals versus Dodgers, it'll be different than Brewers versus Dodgers. So I just want to wait. I'll have the next video up Thursday for you guys. Again, don't forget to click, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching this video. If you disagree with me with these picks, let me know. Let me know why you think another team will win or what the score is. For the 10th inning, Nick O'Dwyer, see ya.